Yes, we've got an absolute legend on the show. Been desperate to get him on. It's the dawn of Dunfermline, Jim Leishman. How are you, Mr. Leishman? Ah, uh, great, Simon. You know, obviously, it's, it's a strange time in uh, everybody's lives, but we're just getting on with it. I must say, i seen a picture of you the other day. I don't know if you've seen it doing the rounds, but what a handsome young man you are, eh? You better believe that. Don Juan. <laughs> Don Juan. That was George Muller, my manager. He, he used to call me Don Juan every Saturday. Where are you going the night, Don Juan? Who are you with the night, Don Juan? You know, oh, yeah. I know my pals used to want to, they want to pal a boot with me, you know what I mean? I was a big fish, and then they got all the wee minnows that I left too, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. How did you spend any time playing football? You must have been playing kissy, kissy, catch you all day. No, no, I just stood. I just stood there, Simon. They caught me. You didn't <laughs> run for brawling birds at that age. Oh, brilliant. Uh, right, we'll talk about the playing career to start with, Jim. Now tell us, if you scored at Ibrox? Oh, I don't know who told you that, Simon, but one of the proudest nights of my life. Uh, think about it, I was still a teenager, eh? And right. the, 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 it was the 60s when they had a really, really good squad of players. Bert Payton, actually, in 1969, scored the goal. And we were really struggling for... Uh, to avoid relegation. They drew with Clyde on the Saturday. They scored on the Saturday 2-2 and then at Ibrox. I think it was two weeks before Rangers went to, to Barcelona to play Moscow Dynamo. And the, John Gregg was the only player for that team was in the, was in the plane. He was recovering for a wee injury, eh? so he didn't play, but the rest of them, all the big team played. And I scored the fourth goal. Eh? We won 4-3, 81st minute, governor end, just outside the box, left foot. <laughs> no, that I can I can't mind much about it, Simon. Right, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but your dad was a big Rangers man, wasn't he? He was a Rangers man. Aye, my father, eh? But he supported me, Simon. He was he was my he was my mentor. He was a great guy, my father, eh? And a coal miner, right. hardy man, stocky man, but fully encouragement for me and my two brothers and my sister, eh? He says what, you can achieve that. What was his advice going when you went to the game, Jim? <laughs> Aye, that was great. Uh, uh, unbelievable! No, that was a different game, Simon. Eh? Oh, that, was was a game, that, that, that was a game when he, uh, two things he said to me. Eh? Derek Parlin had scored two hard tricks uh, two weeks before, and I was going to be Martin Derek Parlin. And uh, my dad was reading this in the paper, and I was just going to uh, need cars or that time. I was going out to get the uh, a double decker blind red on Fenland bus to go and play against Rangers. Can you believe it? Wow. And just before, that was true, half a crown return, you got the bus there and back. And uh, my dad said to me, James, the most motivational thing I've ever heard in my life, James, Derek Parlin, I'll never, he could never be as good a son to me as you've been. Go out there. And, you're, and I'm telling the truth, Derek Parlin got 10 half at half time, black and blue. Did you boot him, eh? Eh? Did you boot him? I, I, and the warm up. <laughs> uh, doing the steps I think I was in the dressing room sitting, sitting beside him in his dressing room eh? but then but, uh, the very first time uh, playing against uh, uh, Rangers Simon excuse my language but true eh? my dad was winding me up and as I say I was outside the, the bus stop and he shouted James open the uh, council house for Gelly open the window James and I knew he was going to the game I said I better go see to my father eh? So he's sitting in his big chair and he's having a cigarette. And uh, I went, well, Dad, I'm away to the game. I'm away to play against your team today. The mighty Glasgow Rangers. Well, he stood up in the blue, took a, 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 inhaled his cigarette, blew the reek in my face, and he said to me, I hope you get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for swearing, but that was my encouragement. You can swear, you can swear. Ah, but no, I, no, I'm the provost. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to say, Lord Provost, man. Like, I was going to wear a call and tie today because you're the Lord Provost, but I need it for court tomorrow. Nah, it's a, it's a, one of the biggest honours ever, Simon, eh, for a, a miners boy. Wow. You to get elected by the people first and foremost, and then all the councillors voting for you. To, and I, got, I was the first to get re-elected, Simon, which made it special for me. Eh? How did that come about? How did it come about? You getting the Lord Provost? You, uh, you, you want the truth? Yeah. I'm sitting in the house. I'm sitting in the house, and the phone rang. I picked up the phone, and it, this rough voice, Jim. Oh, Gordon here, right? I said, Gordon, who? Uh, and it was Gordon, the retrover supporter, right? the former prime minister. He's on the phone to me. Gordon Jim, do you fancy being, do you fancy being a, a, a councillor? 
for Dunfermline Central. I said, oh, Gordon, I've never done that. I've not done the point. No, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I said, no, Gordon, I'm no fuss. I'm no fuss. He said, I'll phone you next week. Think about it. And that's true. If you hadn't phoned me back, Simon, right? If you hadn't phoned me back, I would never have took the step. So he phoned me back, went down to his house in Queen's Ferry, a slice of toast, a cup of, a cup of tea, and uh, I said, right, Gordon, I'll, I'll be it. I'll, I'll knock the doors. I'll do my canvassing. And uh, if I get a like it, fine. But if I didn't like it, I'm out. As quick as I go in, if I get a like that, I'll be out. Because if I didn't enjoy it, what's the point? And then it was announced in the papers the next day, Simon A. And my pal, one of my pals, uh, who, Kelly Hearts, uh, right? You know, I'd been, a, I was uh, the first manager right. uh, when, they were, when they went junior. And uh, he phoned me up, he says, he says, Leach. I says, hi, Ian. He says, have you got a canvas manager? I says, what do you mean? He says, for your campaign. You have to plan it out in a canvas. I says, no, I've not. I'll do it. I says, have you done it before? He says, no, but we'll get through it. I'll help you. So he picked his up the next night at six o'clock. True story. Ian Thompson's his name. And he's got a, a big rosette vote with me. Eh? He says, right, I've got the roots. And two, he goes up the street, parks the car, knocks on the door. As we wife, he comes to the door. He jumps in front of me, starts singing. I like peaches, I like cream. Big Jim's the leader of your team. I'm standing behind him and say, no chance. No, that, they didn't do that. That's not what they did. She says, oh, you're the football boy. I says, I'm, mum. She's an old age pension. She says, oh, you did a great job with that football team. You're going to vote. There are four of us in this house and we're all voting for you. Good luck. She shut the door. I'm like, I can't believe this. See? And he says, right, we'll zigzag up the street. I said, well, go up and come down. No, zigzag, we've got to let them see you come in. Second door. A wifey comes out again, old wifey. He jumps in front of me again, away he goes singing again. Big Jim's the leader for the team. She says, oh, can your mum and dad, son? Hard-working people. If you like them, you'll do it for us. There's three years, we're all voting for you. Two doors, see if we vote something. This is adorable. They've never asked me a question about politics or nothing. I said, this is brilliant. <laughs> so, I said, right, I'll have a go. I've got this song. I'll have, this is a true story, son. I'll, I'll be the third door. Knocks the door and says, Denny. Denny, do it, man. Denny, no, I, I, no, Denny, go away. I says, no, I've got seven votes all day. I says, Denny, I says, why no? The first two were my aunties. <laughs> 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 he set me up with his two aunties, eh? I couldn't even believe this. It was, it was oh, brilliant. Funny, man, brilliant, eh? And that was my introduction. And I got, I got, I did all the canvas and stuff. I got, I got elected on the Friday, two weeks later, at the first few council meeting. Uh, I got, uh, they, they had a vote, third item on the agenda, election of the provost, and I got, uh, I got elected as a provost. Eh? Amazing. Any of you perks in the job that you can tell us about? Oh, loads. You get picked up in the morning sometimes and taking, uh, taking him at night if you're at a function. So you can have a wee glass of wine. At the front. Just a wee glass, but no, I've, uh, really, it's an honour for me, Simon, eh, to be honest. I'm being serious. It's uh, Fife's the third biggest. You've got Glasgow and Edinburgh, and then you've got Fife. Uh, uh, we're the biggest area wise, but population is. So to get elected, I'll be 10 years, two years for now, 10 years uh, as the province of the kingdom. Remember, say the kingdom, Simon. The kingdom. Eh? So you're basically in charge of Dick Campbell as well, aren't you? You're basically oh, in charge. He's to report to me. <laughs> I'll tell you something though, Jim. He did say you were some player, but and he was also there the night that the incident with Jim Jeffries that led to your severe Aye. injury as well. And well, here's his words. Here's his words for you before you tell the story. Dick Campbell's words is, "It was such a bad injury, I had to put a shin guard to ease the pain in his mouth. And now when I listen to his poetry, pish, I wish I wish I'd kept the shin guard in." <laughs> that's, that's true. He says it all the time about me. Eh? <laughs> See, poet is uh, you know, you, uh, to be a poet. Right? You've got to have uh, brains to write this stuff. You know, romantic poems and, and humorous poems and, uh, and people, people die in that. People ask me to write a poem about the person. That, and and, and that, that can you read and write. <laughs> like, we explained that night. Dick and I were double centre halves. Eh? I did a lot of running about and tackling and Dick passed it back to the goalie. Eh? It was Dick I go that stopped. <laughs> he got that plastic back to the goal and it stopped because that's all he did. And he's going to say money is me. <laughs> that's, that's a disgrace, that. 
disgrace. Never worth as much as me. Was it Jim Jeffries that smashed you, Jim? Aye, aye. You know, that night, I, what I remember, it was the old, the old League Cup and it was home and away, and we beat Hearts the week before. On the Wednesday before, we beat Hearts at Tencastle 3-2. And uh, a legend winger, Jackie Sinclair, who was his last season come back for down south, and he played, he played for Dunfermline, uh, and he went to uh, the Fierce Cup, played the, won the Fierce Cup with Newcastle. And I was right back, and he, or right midfield, and he was right. He scored a hat-trick that day, and then on the, the following week, George Muller, Donald Ford was playing for, uh, for a hat, and it was in the for the World Cup team. He was, uh, he was a striker in the World Cup squad, eh? And George Muller, you know, Jim, uh, uh, if Donald goes off the park, for a toilet, you go off and wipe his bum. You get that type of thing. You get that sort of close you had to get. And uh, he, I was playing. I, I, I was. I was doing. It was a good time in my career. I was playing really well, and and progressing. And then fifty. Well, it was maybe sixty forty eh, in Jim Jeffrey's favour. And I just went, and he, he came down, and that was it. Compound fracture. Seventeen months. I was out for seventeen months. Son. Wow. No chance of coming back. No chance. And did he not send you a bowl of fruit in the hospital? Aye, aye. Him and who else come with him? Drew Busby. Him and Drew Busby come in. I thought it was a, I thought it was a Thursday, eh? It was a, the accident was a Wednesday night. I thought it was Thursday the next day. And it was a Friday. I was out for a whole day and they come in with a, and it was rotten fruit, eh? I could go for the front desk, eh? <laughs> Jim, uh, miserable, man. <laughs> but but I did. A bowl, of, a bowl of rotten fruit. <laughs> if I could... If I could I was in a false tookie, eh? If I could do it to the bed, I'd have wrapped him right in the chin. <laughs> I would have whacked him, eh? Uh, right, Jim, just on to the management. As you Aye. said, you get a 29. Uh, yeah. You revolutionised the club at that time. What was it? Youthful energy, enthusiasm? Was that the factors in turning the, in turning the club around? Just, just, a, just a great manager, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen. <laughs> you know, I remember saying to myself, Right, we were 26, 26 uh, part-time players. And when I took over, there were 38 teams in the league, I took over, uh, and I went in my first team talk, right? I addressed to the players, as I say, some of them were older than me, some were 30, 32, 34. And I said, they've been getting hammered every week, negative, negative. And I said, I'm going to try and be a wee bit more positive and talk about the good times that done, what, what, what we've achieved here. Because previous managers had took the photos doing eh? Hey, Jock Steen, hey, hey, all the 61, 65, 68 teams, the great teams that done had. had. And this is, I walked in and they all goes quiet. My first, my first sentence, right lads, we're 34th top. <laughs> 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 is that no? Is that no a great way? To, we're fourth bottom. Is that not a great way? He's saying, "Hey lads, he's a crap." Eh? <laughs> and a nice way, thirty fourth. Come on, uh, right, so it's a pub team. No wonder we're a pub team. So how did you change it then? I just I got rid of eleven players. I, I, I was thirty fourth, and at the end of the season we were thirty third. And I say to myself, if they didn't go, I'll get put out. They'll not put up with their performances. I've got already 11 players. Now, happy go lucky, jovial Jim, right? There was a, there was a hard side, eh? Yeah. They're good to me. Then I brought boys like John Watson in. Big John Watson. Uh, Ian Westwater, the goalie. Yeah. And uh, 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 Big McCarthy. I made McCarthy a defender. Right? He was a, a, a left midfielder, attacking midfielder. I brought in Big Davy Young. Davy scored the first two goals in the Premier League. Uh, made him and him and McCarthy uh, double centre halves. Made uh, an old Jock Steen thing, eh? Jock Steen uh, when he went to Dunfermline, he had Willie Callaghan was a right a right winger, and John Lynn were a, he was two, John Lynn Callaghan and Lynn who was a left winger, eh? So he, he pulled John Lynn back to left back and Willie Callaghan back to right back, two attacking full backs. John Lynn was a really really underestimated player, yeah. and they became. Uh, Callaghan and Lund, Callaghan and Lund every week. And I, I put Bobby Forrest for left winger to left back. So my, and Bobby Robertson, that was my, I got a steady back four. Brought in great wee players. We Gary Thompson. Right. Uh, sadly, he got killed, uh, uh, fell, fell down on the scaffold. Uh, I brought Davy Moyes, 
No, no, David Moyes, Man United. David Moyes, the bricky. Aye. Right. Probably, better, probably better than David Moyes at Man United. They're, they're great for me, Simon. And fifteen hundred quid. Signed on for Terry Christie, and uh, uh, I just, I just got good players. Say, eh? good managers. Uh, it's all about good players. If you get good players, they make you a good manager, Simon. Make no mistake about that. See, because you were so young, Jim, was there any was there any older managers that were helping you? Again, your yep. Was Alex Ferguson though quite big for you as well? well? Alex Ferguson was on the phone if I wanted him. Uh, uh, Jim McLean was brilliant with me. Jim McLean, because I was near a danger to them, Simon. You know, Alex Ferguson at that time was in Aberdeen. Jim McLean was having a great squad, you know, the European days at Paradise. So I wasn't a threat to these guys because we were in the old second division. Yeah. We were doing there. We were not we were not trying to take points off them to win their leagues and that. So Jim I would phone Jim McLean and get rid of him. Get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, no, get him get him if he's not got idea, get him out. What was, the best bit, what was the best bit of advice they gave you? That one of them gave you as a young manager? Uh, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell them how All you right. feel. Uh-huh. I mean, Simon, you're not playing the day. Uh, because you're not producing it. Eh? You can do it, but you're not doing it. So I'm leaving you. That was the worst. And that was one of my mistakes I made early on in experience was uh, trying to tell the players on the day of the game. Because no matter, you, you know the score sign, the fan telling you you're not playing today, you want to know why you're saying how you, and you're going to disagree. Yeah. And, and I've got to explain all that and it takes your mind off the game. Eh? So I stopped that. I stopped doing that with advice. Uh, uh, I think it was Alex Smith that said that, Jim. That, that's for a training night. Yeah. If they want to speak to you, let them stay back after their training. He arrived at the leagues, Jim. He obviously Hi. got to the top division. We used part time for, for a large period of that. We, we were part-time until we got promotion to the Premier League. We were, no, I'm telling a lie, we were semi-part-time. Boys like, say, Ian McCall, no, uh, Ian McCall, John Watson, I think Stevie Morrison, about half a dozen players were, were full-time, only getting something like 75 quid a week. It wasn't a big wage, they were, because they didn't have jobs, they wanted to come in. And then when we got promotion to the Premier League, uh, all the directors and all the players, uh, we went across to Spain, uh, Magaluf, and uh, we negotiated deals to get them full time. But again, that's what that was. That was a fun, you know. I can ask 29, Simon, my first year, full year, we finished third. We finished third top, my first full year. Right. The next year, we won the championship. The next year, we got promotion to the Premier League for the first time. So I was only 34, eh? So I'd, I had a, I'd won a promotion with Dunfermline as a player, 1972, and then another three promotions, and I was only 34. Wow. And I made my first mistake then. What was it? I, I kept the same team that got promotion. I gave them all a chance. They were all good enough now. And I, I, I should have realised that. that I, would, I would have spoke to them and said, look, I'm not keeping you on. This is what I should have said, and I thought about it. I'm not keeping you on. You're finished here as an achiever. You've went up the two divisions. You've done brilliant, but I'm going to sign someday, and <clears throat> and you'll know you'll not be getting a game. I should have been honest then and said to them, you know, but I gave them all. And when we got relegated, right, and then we won the promotion again, and I didn't make the same mistake. See, back in the day, would you ever get in like an argument with players in the dressing room? Oh, no. You're joking. You're joking, man. What's the one, what's the one, that, that, what's the one that stands out? The two. We're going for promotion. We're at Meadow Bank, right? We're playing beautiful weather. You know, instead of my blazer and flannels on, collar and tie, I'm going to go to the shorts on, eh? And we're getting beat two and a half time. I'm like that. And one of the players, sure be that was right. Should be the, he says, ah, look, look, you're asking us to switch on, and you've come all the, the casual gear and all this, sworn in the boot. Then I lost the plot, and the two are lying on the flare, eh? lying on the flare, hooting and jabbing me. Eh? And I'm like, actually, you're solid when you talk to me. What does it get you? Nothing, eh? Nothing. So they're all pulling us away, you know? and anyway, we got beat. And the second one, scary. We're playing St. Martin. <laughs> I'd signed Doug Rugby, 
right, for uh, uh, an English there. I can't remember what team, but he come up, signed up for a year, big Duke. Ian Monroe's assistant, right? So <clears throat> we're getting beat one nothing. Comes in. I was I was banned to the stand, right? So I'm coming down to the dressing room. And big Duke Rugby is going to stiffen Ian Monroe. Because Ian Monroe had said something, right? So I've got to come in between them, eh? I'm not kidding, he's got his shirt off. I'll rip away. And I've got my hands in his neck. And I'm trying to pull him down. Pull him down. But no, he's just... <laughs> a colossus, man. He's huge. And muscles, see? Get doing, sit doing. Get doing. Get doing. I'm no, I couldn't get him doing. And somebody started tying their lace. And I said, right, you. Stop tying your lace when I'm having an argument. And pay attention, eh? And nobody started laughing. <laughs> Big dude, rugby. Oh... <laughs> nah, nah, but not very often, Simon. Yeah. Not very often did I lose the, the head at the players because I'm talking in the dressing room. That wasn't in my style, eh? No. Nah. That wasn't in my style. Uh, they, they knew if I, uh, uh, if I lost the head, that was for a reason, eh? You, even just talking to you, you can tell your love for Dunfermline and uh, that's shown when you were moved for the job in 1990. 4,000 fans protest against the decision. Nah. Why have you moved on for the job? <laughs> That was a that was that was a crazy time. The, the board got that wrong, Simon. They no talked to me before, right? And it was obvious. Simon Rowe wanted a job, and he had made a couple of pounds on the board and whatever. And, and I, I thought about it. They offered me the managing director's job or whatever. I was only I was only forty year old. I was hardly no even that. You know, I said no, and. Uh, I turned it down and I went and, and did other things, Simon. So, no, it wasn't for me. My first full season, we had 22,000 fans paying eight quid a week. Again, 22,000 for the full year. That was cup games and everything. Eh? When, I, when I left, eh, we were the fourth highest supported team in Scotland. I've got, I've got third tier, Jim. Third highest team. Third tier. That were the third highest team paying 12 quid. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I gave them something to be proud of, Simon. Eh? I just finished reading the Bong Shankly, eh? the, the Bong Shankly eh, stuff. And you know, it was the same. I'm not, I'm not comparing myself to Bong Shankly. Then get his, that'd be stupid. And, and Mr. Steve Nebo is a legend. But it was the same. I gave the people something to be proud of. Eh? They were proud of their people. I spoke to Gordon Smart, and obviously your daughter's married to Gordon Smart. Yeah. And she was saying at that time there was like fans outside your house and all that wanting you to come back. Aye. The press, the, the, see Simon, that's where I was clever, eh, with the, with the press. The press were outside the house wanting photos and that, eh. And Ken, I'm saying, I'm not a criminal or whatever, you know. So I went out and said, look, come in for a cup of tea, eh. So Mary would put the, the, the tea and the cup of biscuits on. So the boys were sitting and I said, right, get a photo, lads, and do that and we'll have a chat. It was uh, uh, during that time, Simon, in the November, when it was all going on, I got £5,000 pay rise in the November. So I was supposed to be, uh, 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 what was it they said? I uh, was wanting somebody with a European experience. Uh, it, was a, it was a carry on, Simon, eh? Carry on. Did you not tell them that you go to Magaluf every year? Is that not European experience? Yeah, that's that's yeah. Best European experience of my life. <laughs> Dick Campbell. Uh, oh, Dick uh, Campbell. We're going to talk about Dick. Just some of your best, fa- funniest memories uh, time shared with Dick. See, right, here's the story, right? First time ever telling us, and it's a true story. Right. Dick and I jumped about together, right? At the dancing. But we wouldn't go in. Graham Shaw. Graham Shaw played with Tom Fernand, Hearts, Arbroath, and that was a bit... He, Right, but he was a teammate of Dunfermline, Big Totty Shaw, and Pink, right? Dick's brother Ian. They would go to the dancing, right? And they'd be chatting the birds up, buying them drink, whatever. Dick and I would come up half an hour to go, ask them to dance, and we'd get fixed on. Never cost us a penny. And Dick <laughs> and Totty Shaw were looking like that. That's the way you do it, Simon, right? That's the way you do it. And that's what we did. You're no dark man, you're no dark man. Right? Looks at everything told me, Anna, you can have as much money as you like, but you need to be good looking, don't you? Correct. And that's why Dick pulled out with me. I told you earlier on, there was always two, and Dick got the one, that I, obviously. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, you deserved an MBE for manager Livingston. Uh, you took them for Meadowbank Thistle. 
What's your memories of that and any odd experiences? I tell you, I was, I was Meadowbank Thistle manager for two months. I'm the last Meadowbank Thistle manager, right? The best manager at Meadowbank Thistle they've ever had, Terry Christie. He did a great job, Simon. But I got them for two months. <clears throat> and uh, uh, my, my first game was Dumbarton at, at Meadowbank. And Murdo McLeod was the manager at Dumbarton. He got them promotion that year. They're going for mo- promotion and we're, we're trying to avoid relegation in Meadowbank. So I walked out. And the scarves, the, the amber or the yellow and black scarves are all waving. I'm, I'm clapping on eh? I forgot the barn had the same colours. It was the barn fans. I'm clapping like a... <laughs> 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 what are you doing, man? What are you doing? And then, I think it was my second game. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a team talk, eh? I'm doing a team talk. Ding, ding. With the following uh, car registration, X, Y, Z, 3, 4, 2. Please report to the car park. You're blocking the passage. And I'm doing my team talking. I'm saying to myself, let's get out of here. But Livingston was brilliant, Simon. Livingston was brilliant. So you must have been delighted, Jim, where you took them for the Meadowbank Thistle and then you're getting them promoted to the Premier League. Did you ever think that was possible when you first, first went in there? That was a dream. Hard work, Simon. A lot of yeah. good people. Davy Hay, Davy Hay, we John Robertson now in Preston. A lot of good players. And I'd learned, I learned from Dunfermline that I couldn't go up with second division players, first division players. And that's when, that's when I, I signed Marvin Andrews, Stephen Tosh, Javier Broto, the goalie. Oh, what a keeper he was, Broto. He was superb. Did you go, was it Celtic with you, Simon? Uh, I was a kid when he was Celtic, so was Fernandez as well. No, well, I signed David Fernandez. I went to see. Uh, Airdrie play Dundee United in the cup up at uh, Tannadice. I'm sitting in the stand and I was I was I went up to watch Broto, right? Uh, Javier Broto, mm-hmm. and he was doing great. And this wee boy kept getting the ball and going one on one, eh? And he, twice he missed, twice he missed, just one on one with the goal. He missed that, that thing. But I said, What a talented wee boy, eh? And uh, he got sent off. And I went back and I said, Right to Dominic Keaton, I said, Dominic, I'll tell you. We've got to get Fernandes and Bro. As soon as we get a chance, we'll get the two of them. And we got them eight on a Friday night, the transfer window. We got them. See, we've had him on the show. I love him. What a character, Marvin Andrews. Yeah, hey. Did you did you bring the pastor over at your house or something? Is that true? No. I tell you, Pastor Joe. <laughs> pastor Joe. The Vine <laughs> Church. No, the Vine Church. I'm telling you, Zion Praise. And Pastor Joe, he had all the, you know, he's like these. Yeah, the American dudes, right? You can with the, the purple suits and all this. And again, he's the he's the minister, the pastor. Marvin did well with us. We finished third top in the league. Yeah, third top, uh-huh. And uh, all the boys did it. So we want to sign uh, the ones that want to sign. We want to sign them back on. And uh, I try to get Marvin, try to get him, and they finally gets Pastor Joe. They've been at a meeting, a prayer meeting in Carton Den, and they've just finished. So I got them up to the hoods. So uh, Mary was in the kitchen, she was making us sandwiches and a cup of tea. And I started talking to him, look, I'd like to sign you, Marvin. I think he was on about 800 quid a week or something. And uh, I'd like to offer you 1,200 pounds. Uh, oh, no, God want, God's want me to move on, eh? I said, all right. <laughs> I said, all right. So I could own, I could own, Simon, that I was, I look, Marvin, I'll, I'll speak to Dominic here. The chairman. So I went through and you know, I kiddled on the phone. Come back, Marvin, I can go to 1600. No. Him and Pastor Joe went away in. Pastor Joe was going praying all the time. He was praying. I'm like, this. I was, I was like, this is some agent. This, eh? how, can, how can we deal with God? How can you speak to him on the phone? You know what I mean? <laughs> I was saying, hey, God, you, you, you got a minute? <laughs> I, okay, but I'm taking it serious. And I'll tell you another story about Marvin as well, just after that. Funny. And uh, anyway, I think we'll go up to about 2,200 2, and God started listening. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so after that, he agreed. Uh, uh, they're just rough figures. He agreed, right? Marvin agreed to sign. And, we're, and Mary come through with the sounds of the tea. We're all holding hands. And Pastor Joe started a prayer meeting. Eh? We had to pray. Oh, I want to say, thanks, thanks, Lord. Thanks, Lord. That's really kind, Lord, that you've agreed for Marvin to come with it. The greatest deal in the world. I was like this. And they went, 
Oh, brilliant. Love that. What's the next, what's the next one with Marvin? They're into this singing thingy. Like, there was a, 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 they, had a, they had a gospel band come across from America, Mississippi. So you can, and I like the gospel singing. Yeah, I, like, I like listening to them. They're good tunes. So they had this, so this band at Los Gales Center. And because Marvin was only Martin, I said, Marvin, it's on two nights. I'll come along with the nights to give you a bit of support. So it goes along. It was the second night. It was the Thursday, I think. And the, the, the preacher's on. And he's, he's, he's saying, uh, now, uh, to be a good Christian, it's not a person who, uh, a good Christian is not the person that puts a $10 bill into the king. He says, that's not good Christians. Not a not hundred dollars. No, it's not even a thousand or a check for a million dollars. That's not what it's about. It's about believing. Blah, blah, blah. He's got all this and, and they're all, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, God, praise God. And, then he says, and at the end of it, he says, now, before I finish, we're going to bring a bucket round. Could you put some money in the bucket? <laughs> all of the 10 quid notes. Uh, Martin Dittany for a tenner. Eh? And it's not about money, mind. It's not about the money. Could you put money in the bucket? Oh, oh, great. Martin was great. Oh, amazing. Great. We felt like, How far we, did he hit at the ball? He could hit at the ball for miles, couldn't he, Marvin Andrews? I, he hit at the boy's head first, then the ball. <laughs> Honestly, half the time, you, half of Marvin's head would hit the boy's head in the ball. It was a great head. Of the ball. Mm. Him and Oscar Rubio, solid. Solid. Who was your, your favourite player for that Livingston team, Jim? So, my favourite, David Fernandez. Uh. Kino. Brilliant. Bro, brilliant. Did you think Fernandez would do better at Celtic? Sorry? Did you think Fernandez would do better at Celtic? I, I, I thought we'd have got more games in, but hey, typically, at Livingston, he was a man. He, he, was a, he got the ball and he made something happen. Celtic, you had Larson, you had all these, Mark Namaras, you had, you had the, the, you know, all the foreign guys, and they're great players. Yeah. And David wasn't that standard, eh? But he came back to Livingston, he came back to Livingston, won a League Cup final medal. See, on that third, third place finish. Aye. Uh, was, was that was unbelievable? It, was it oh, unbelievable? But that's what I was going to ask is, was there any approaches from other teams to come and take you? When I was at Dunfermline. When I was at Dunfermline, Simon. I had a great job, Simon. Why would I want to leave Livingston? I know, Why but I mean, like doing South or... New York City, when right. I was younger. But I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go, Simon. Right. It was my team, eh? Uh -huh. I should have done. I should have done. I should have went down. I should have. I should have gave it a go. And test them. Maybe I didn't have enough self confidence, and you've got to have that. Well, you've got plenty of now. Oh, but well, you know, <laughs> you've achieved. It's definitely, when you, it's it's having that and no achieved, Simon. Eh? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not trying to be big headed. No, it's just a laugh, isn't it? No, I bet. No, it's it's a little different. Eh? Have some great ones. I wish I was starting again, I'll tell you that. Uh -huh. Same here, Jim, same here. Uh, see, with the Livingston, you also had some exciting young talent coming through as well. Uh, you went up to Robert Snodgrass's house to sign him, didn't you? Unbelievable, Simon. Snoddy. Well, you know, people talk about... Uh, David Hay was not done for at the uh, time. And a scout called Jim MacArthur, right? Uh, no, 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 the goalie. That was their cousins. Right. right, you come up and he says, I need £20 a week. I says, what, what, what are you want £20 a week for? For Robert Snodgrass's mum. Your job. What, what, what's this all about? Well, uh, you know, she's, uh, she's not got a job, but uh, it's said that 20 quid would get her messages and whatever, and get, get some. I says, what's the point of this? Jim? He says, he'll sign for us. He's not want to leave his mum, single woman. You know what he go doing so if Leeds United were trying to get him somebody else, that'll, that'll get us on the right track. So, £20 a week, did that, and he signed. Robert Snodgrass signed for, for Livingston, young boy. Great. Lee you know Griffiths. Is Lee Griffiths. Is it two with Snodgrass? Sorry, uh, I interrupted you. Is it two with Snodgrass that you and Davey Hay went up to his mum's house? No, just me. Me and Jim McCarthy. We went out and you want to know, it was a sort of, you know, there was, I think it was four, four houses, four flats in the lower level and four above. And two of the flats were blocked, you know, blocked off. Yeah. They were trying to get them out and she was in the end one. 
so it went into the street. Robert used to get chased through the scheme. Going to get picked up. Boys would, he would have a bag of crisps of Mars bar or something. He was getting chased to get the bus. And uh, I'm really proud of him, eh, for what yeah. he's achieved. Lee Griffiths, who did he start off? Livingston. James McPay. Uh, Dorns. Dorns as well, yeah. All, all these boys. Livingston. How was, Griffiths. How was Griffiths as a kid? I, I didn't have much dealings with him, eh? Right. I didn't have much dealings with him. He was, he was really young, but you saw he had ability, eh? You saw he had something, eh? Dunfermline said they wanted somebody with European experience, and now you've got it. Livingston in Europe. How do you look back on the ties against Badoos and Stone Gratz? <laughs> Can you believe it? Did you take your speedos, Jim? Did you take your speedos over? I, I always had them in, in the case for the post hotels, for the pool. But no. Uh, unbelievable, Simon, eh? Um, okay. I went out at the Deuce, Liechtenstein, and I stood, and they're playing the national anthem, and I'm not joking you, I, I've got tears coming through my face. I've got tears coming, I, I'm saying, this is a UEFA Cup tie. You're fellow Gelly, man. What a journey this has been. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, if, did that get, no, Dick, Dick, I'm not sure, sorry, Dick. But, uh, <laughs> I'm looking along at these players saying, inside me saying, thanks very much, boys. Last year, finishing, thanks very much. You've, get, you've made me achieve something I'd never, ever thought. And uh, and it was funny. The second, we, we, we drew 1-1 one, one over there. The second game, I don't know if you, you, you heard of this, uh, the ex injury time, added time, the referee gives a corner. Right? The corner comes in, he scores. And they, they're, they're going mentally. The referees, when the ball was, they, when they took the corner, the referee blew for time up. Nobody heard the whistle, eh? All right. Oh, it's not a goal. It's not a goal. Is it? No, like this. Well, all the directors for this come down and they push me, eh? Hey, you cheating. You're cheating. You're cheating. I'm, 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 I'm not cheating. It wasn't me. No, it didn't me. Hey, go on, on, on. Listen. The, the, who is it? One of the radio guys comes in and says, Jim, what have you got to say? The deuce must be really, really gutted. What have you got to say to them? What can you say? I says, I'll tell you what I'm going to say to them. O O T out. <laughs> right, that was it. You're out. We'll see you next year. Cheerio. Adios, amigo. That was brilliant. And then, well, Arnold Schwarzenegger Stadium, Livingston. The year before, they beat Rangers 5 2 or some 5 1. I thought, see, and here's. Here's kind of your Livingston. They, they, they were wondering where we come from, eh? Amazing. They didn't care where Livingston was, man, these teams. And they didn't do well there. I think 5 2 we got beat. Yeah. But they beat them at home, eh? Did you beat them at home, eh? We beat them at home. Wow. Um, 8 6 on aggregate. That was, that was the aggregate score, 8 6. Why did you leave in the end then, 2003? Do, do, Dominic Keane. Eh? Uh, Gavin Masterton asked me to come back. He phoned me up. Gavin Masterton and John Yorkson wanted me to come back to Dunfermline. That's the place you should be. And uh, 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 Dominic brought in the guy from uh, Brazil. Master Brazil? Aye, ah, the Brazilian uh, boy. And how was he? How was he? Murder. Pa, pa, pa. He, he, I sat in the, his first board meeting and he says, he says I have got, I've got formations that can beat the old firm. I said to myself, I said, let's go. this has got, I'm no missing the games, I'll tell you that. I've got formations that it's all about players, you have to have So, when would he do the pa, pa, pa? In stream talks. He talks. Right, guys, I want, we'll play four, four, pa, two, pa, pa. Get the ball, pa, pa, pa. Honestly, murder. Murder. <laughs> Who was he? He was Pally, he was Pally with... He, he used to coach what player? A Brazilian player. He, what's a, the boy, he, he, the striker? Ron, Ron, Ronaldinho. Oh, Ronaldinho, right? Yeah. Right, that was his, he used to he coach this boy as a, a kid, eh? And the press, the press went, right? So he went across to the training ground, the boys' training ground, uh, and he went up, and this photographer gets a photo of him. Now, if, if you're Brazilian, I'm Brazilian, 
you're in a different country and I see you, something in the Brazilian, you're going to answer the question. Eh? Yeah. And the, the president would take a photo and they went away. And he, he could only use his best pally. Oh, yeah. it's killing us. The, <laughs> the boy didn't even know who he was, wasn't he? <laughs> Hopeless. Did you, did you know get a referee drunk the night before the game and try and get it off? Oh, that was Jim Renton. That was, oh, <laughs> that was Jim Renton. That was the day of the game. A cow and beef derby. Now, I I was... Nora McCarthy was out. Nora was uh, my, my main defender. Big John Watson was out, my striker. Golden shot that year. So there's a pitch inspection at Central Park. So I goes through and Jim's here. And I'm like, oh, Jim, you can't play in this, you can't play in this. No, oh, I'll, 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 I'll be thrown out. I said, Jim, I'll be walking all the time. No, you can't play. And, she's, and the, the boy, the boy, the chairman of Cowden Beath, right? He, they, they had, they had frozen, uh, uh, the frozen, the, what did you all the pies were, and they got them out of the freezer, oh no, they, they frosted them, and they, oh, come on, we've, we've, we've defrosted our pies, they'll look keep you, <laughs> like this, thought about a game of football, you know? I said, Jimmy, so we went, his wife's name was Rosemary, so he, he stayed near the park, he says, come on, Jim, uh, we'll come back at 12 o'clock, this was about 10 o'clock in the morning, come on, Jim, we'll get a bit of breakfast, go to his house, and it was New Year's Day, eh? Right, it's, it's, you, you fancy a half? Ah, I'll bring the New Year's. So you had a half. So the bottle come away. <laughs> so, so we swallowed this bottle of whiskey before we came. Ah, I'm not putting it on, Jim. I'm not putting the game on. <laughs> so we're steaming, man. He went back to tell him he was steaming. I'm like, ah, I can't even believe you, Jim. <laughs> That's a true story. Ah, oh, bro, he was there, man. He was in there. I'm like, this. Christ, I better get, get stoked with the police. <laughs> Can you imagine that these days? Oh no, imagine that with the referee. Oh, oh brilliant. But that's, oh, you're that's a true story. True story, Simon. That's brilliant, I love it. I love it, mate. Uh, that's not your only talent, though. Uh, it's not just the poetry. You're also a budding Paul Daniels magician as well. Oh, yeah. Aye. I How did this that. come about? How did you start learning magic? My brother, my brother. My brother, he uh, did it. He did a week. He was in the Merchant Navy. He was on the Queen Mary. The original Queen Mary, the one that's oh. in, and uh, he'd come back and uh, they, they showed me a couple of kid tricks. <coughs> but it's no, uh, you've, you've, you've not just done it in your house, you've done it, you've done it for famous people as well. I, I've heard that in the Bunga Bar, after the Scotland-England game, you done magic tricks for Martin Comston and Stephen Graham. Is that true? I forgot about that. <laughs> hey, the boy, never met them, but the, my hero, Stephen Graham. My hero. Okay, Both of them. Okay, and he's walking around the corner. We're going in. I'm going in with, with, with Gogsy, right? And uh, there, was a, there was a guy, a, a street guy with the cars in the corner. I says, look, there's a five of these in your cares. And I gave him the cares. And Stephen Gray, I says, excuse me, right, pick a care now. He's got this now, doing this. It's like that. His face is like, here's this legend actor. And big jump for like getting like I'm saying, it's like that after like this is great, man. And you've also met other famous people as well. Is it Casey being at Team the Park with Gordon Smart? Oh, did you hear about that? Uh-huh. Yeah. Tell us it. Tell us it. Oh, great, man. You know, Gordon gets you the tickets, eh? Mm-hmm. To meet Casabian. And I'm, I'm outside Casabian. They're watching the football. I can't mean what games on uh, on in their. The, the pre entertainment tent thing. And that goes out and Sugsy, the madness, he's, he's standing next to me. My heroes, all these guys, I'm saying, oh, I'm trying, he was on the phone, I wasn't like, yeah, that was, that was great. And then we get, uh, we goes across to the, the, main, the main tent, the main stage, and we goes up the side, Edith Bowman was there, I was talking to Edith, I've known her for years since she was a bear, and uh, we were looking you know, at the size of these speakers, Simon, eh? they're yeah. huge. So I'm standing, I'm standing behind the speaker. And I'm, I'm, I'm phoning my mates. See, I'm trying to get all my pals. Like, I'm, I'm here. I'm like, oh, yeah, hey, you blare. No chance. I'm telling you, watch. Watch it. So I goes out and taps the mic. This thing. This thing. And it goes back in. The security boys, I've got, they've got my ear up the back. I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to wave to my pals. I didn't mean to say it's stupid. Uh-huh. Yeah, I thought I was going to get sniffed. That was great. That was metal. How's Gordon Smart? Being his son-in-law, good guy, isn't he? Aye. 
Yeah, he's been great. He's, he, as long as he's good to my lassie, that's all it is. Eh? But he's a, yeah. a great boy and he's two great grandchildren, eh? I've got yeah. four. But the the uh, James Andrew Smart, uh, a hip supporter, and uh, Laurie Jean Wallace, Smart, a hip supporter. They're they Dunfermline fans, eh? No, just my, uh, my daughter and me and my son. Mike Gordon's a uh, murder. Do you remember the first time you met him? He told it on the, the podcast with a rip pocket. <laughs> rip pocket. I didn't. I, I just thought he was a strange boy. Eh? <laughs> he was strange. He was just. I said, "This boy's an idiot." <laughs> <laughs> oh, you weren't far wrong, so were you? Ah, no. You see, he's had a he's had a good career. He's a clever boy, Simon. Like yourselves. Uh -huh, he is. He's good. He's good at what he does, isn't he? Uh, Jim, what about managers that you played against? Who's good to have in the office after a game? Who can you get a laugh with, uh, fellow managers? Yeah. Simon, I didn't really get much laughs with them because I just I, twenty minutes before I just beat them, eh? <laughs> 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 well, who's the laugh? Uh, Alan McLeod was a good character. Alan McLeod, when uh, no when he was at Aberdeen, I'm talking when I went back to Air United, right? He always invite you in for a cup of tea. And uh, you'll not believe this, uh, Dick Advoca, very few managers, uh, uh, Simon, uh, would he have in his office for a cup of tea? I was one of the few. And he phoned me one year. I was managing Livingston. I was the manager at Livingston Football Club. He phoned me. He says, Jim, he says, uh, uh, could, you, could you play us a game, Glasgow Rangers, at your park? I said, certainly, aye, that'd be great. That's, that's super. Behind closed doors. I says, well, aye, if that's what you want, I'll, I'll do that for you. Uh, great. Uh, we'll decide who gets in press-wise and whatever, because there's a European game coming up, and we want it a game, and they knew that your part would be a match for it, eh? Right. So we played them. Uh, I can't remember the score. They beat us about 4-0 or something, 4-1, something like that. They beat us anyway. And then next year, phoned us again. Jim, will you do that again for us? I says, no, no, we enjoyed it as much as you. Uh, no, we've, we'll open the doors this time for the fans. We'll let the fans in, and you keep the gate. Oh, uh, honestly, that, that's that was great. So I, I, I thank him for that. Alec Ferguson. Alec Ferguson. We played our centenary game at Dunfermline. Fergie's at Aberdeen. I phoned him up. I we do so on our centenary game. Uh, they just won the, uh, the European Cup when it's cut or the, 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 whatever the one John Hewitt goal. And uh, <coughs> he says, I'll, I'll come to Jim. I says, well, what, what, what are the costs us? What do we need to do? He says, eh, pay for the meal and the bus. Oh, that's great. I'm still waiting on the invoice to this <laughs> day. Never charged you, eh? Never, never charged us for the meal or for the bus. Still waiting to this day. Brilliant. You ever get a glass of red to Fergie? Oh, Often after the game, doing it, doing it, uh, doing it, uh, Old Trafford. Uh, I'll be doing two sheep. <coughs> so, sorry, we used to go down to the training, doing it the cliffs. And uh, went, I went down, and I tell you, I went down on the night before Kenny Dalglish and they uh, came back as a manager at Liverpool and they were playing the uh, Fulham. Uh, Mark Hughes was the manager of Fulham, and, and I went down uh, to meet Alan Kennedy and get some some strips signed by Ian Rush and John Aldridge. All these boys were getting all the strips signed. Uh, and uh, the next day we goes up, me, the boy John Greave, Fergus Powell, Willie Braceway, who's now the vice chairman of the Adam Fairman Football Club, and we goes uh, 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 and, and we're sitting there sitting, Fergie. Do you fancy coming up to Dunfermline and doing a, a gala evening with, with Fergie in Dunfermline for a charity? He looked at me. Well, she says, oh, Christ, I've overstepped the mark there, eh? 15 minutes later, he says, August, August the 8th, eh, I'll come up. Somebody pick me up at the airport, take me back in the morning, and there, I'll do that. No diary, nothing, eh? Brilliant. August the 8th, come up. Sold it out within two weeks for the Middle Eastern Foundation, and they... Eh, yeah, great, great stuff. Uh, right, Jim, we'll talk about your ball and Dunfermline. Second spell, nearly done, mate. How did the return come about? Did you say John, John Oyston phone you up? No, no, I was there. I was there already, Simon. I was doing, 
I was doing the job the other mate when I left the first time. Right. Uh, oh, that the, the the general manager thing, right? Yeah. I, I was doing that, and they, uh, uh, well, uh, we're playing Livingston on the Saturday, and we go beat two nothing. And sadly, Davy Hay lost his job on the Monday, and I recommend him for the job uh, in the first place. And, and uh, John Yorkson and John, I believe John Meatham, another director, they spoke to Davy, and they, they paid him off on the Monday, and they, that was sad. That was sad. Um, and they offered me the job with three games to go. Three games to go, Jim Tico at the end of the season. They were in the boardroom discussing the, the budgets for next year in the first division. <coughs> right, the, he'll hate to go and they'll hate to go. You'll hate to cut the squad to this. I wasn't interested in that, but she had three games to go. So I went on the Tuesday, got the boys together, and they, I, I said to them, guys, life's simple. Life's simple. The very first happen, thing that happens in life for you is you're born. The average boy goes along a straight line and they die. Simple. It's what you do. It's what you do in that line. You either be above it or you go below it. We're below that line now. Whose fault is it? Yours. You guys. You're the only ones that can get to that line and go above. And we've got three games today. So then they talk to me, say we can't do it. I'm telling you we can. And it wasn't about getting them fitter because we only had, a, only had four days. Yeah. But it was getting their, their head set on it. it was how, to... how quickly they, could you see that they could do it? I knew they could. I knew they could be good players. They were yeah. good players. Uh, Derek Young, uh, Darren Young, uh, Derek Stanley, a good goalkeeper. You had Scott Wilson, uh, who played at the high standard. Uh, Big Andy Todd, uh, Greg Shields. So they were they were decent enough players, eh? And uh, Andrew Skelton, and sixty caps or something for Lithuania. So they were. So what I did, my first training day, I took them to Aberdeen, eh, Aberdour. Walked for Aberdour to Burntown and walked back. Sat and had lunch and bought them a pint. That was that was our first training day. How did they boys take to that? Did they enjoy that? Took the pressure right off of them, Simon. Yeah. Didn't even talk about it, and then. On the Wednesday, we got down to, uh, uh, oh, sorry, on the Thursday, we got down to the Nitty Gritty, eh? Mindset. Courage. Courage, right? All this talk about you, you haven't won a game in 13 games, we're all talking about you. Is it good? No. What's the difference? You get good talk, bad talk, the feeling. The different feelings. And this, I, I got into their minds, eh? We went to their minds. And Jim Duffy in the queue there, we sat at the morning, Jim, a great, great pal of mine. Great boy, great football boy, Jim Duffy. And uh, still is. Jim says, I don't know what the worries about Jim Leishman's not playing the day. Well, see it four nothing doing. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Pick that one, he's five nothing we beat him. Couldn't they believe it? What pleased me, Simon, right? We were getting about three and a half thousand people at the home games at that time. And when I walked out, when I walked out that day, there was eight and a half thousand in the stadium to, to go and support the team. That meant so much to me. They've come out. They've come out. They, they, I've told them they've got a chance. They've come out to, to give us a chance. So anyway, did you keep them filming up that year, Jim? No, oh, hi. Would that, that be your greatest achievement? Keep I'll, them tell you, I'll tell you one thing, Simon. It's no far away for you. It's no far away for you because, as I said, they hadn't won in 13 games. We're bottom of the league. And we beat Dundee, United, uh, Dundee 5 0. So for. Until the next Friday, we're, uh, we're, we're sitting bottom. <coughs> Dundee, Dundee were playing Inverness. Uh, uh, in, in Dundee, Dundee United were playing Dunfermline and Dundee the same weekend. So they spun up they spun up to find out who was going to play on the Saturday and who was going to play on the Sunday. Well, we were scheduled to play on the Sunday. Dun, Dundee... Drew and Inverness won one, so they went back up. We went back to the bottom of the league, right? And then we played Dundee United on the Sunday, and the game was delayed for about ten minutes. And the crowds, the Dunfermline supporters, couldn't get in. And, uh, so once they all got in, kicked off, and the eight to ninth minute, Gary Mason scored one that. Wow! Honestly, I was on my knees praying, saying, "Thank you, thanks God." Ah. Thank you for that. Was Pastor Joe? You turned into Pastor Joe for two no, minutes. Didn't you? No, no, I, I turned into the boy that listens. 
<laughs> and we won one nothing Simon. And you know, funny, I'm in the dressing room, right? The crowd went mental. I was going, and I did that. I goes down doing the airplane, eh? And I'm in the dressing room. Greg Robertson comes up. Gaffer, the referee's want to see you. Stuart Dougal, he's want to see you in his dressing room. And I goes to the assistant referee's here. I says, what's the matter? He says, I Stuart's want to see you, Jim. So I goes in, and I shook his hand. He says, Jim, I had this against Livingston two, two, uh, three games ago. Two nine, you got beat. What a transformation in the, uh, that team. Well done, I says, thanks, Stuart. Jim, I've got to report you to the SFA. I says, you're, you're going to report me to this, what for? Over-exuberant celebration. For fuck's sake. Doing the aeroplane, right? The Dundee and Edit fans got a wee bit angry, because I was, I was, Simon, I was celebrating keeping 13 people in a job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? My yeah. colleagues, eh, they were going to get paid off, made redundant, whatever. I was, I was delighted for them, eh? I said, you're joking, Mr. He says, no. He says, he didn't like that, and you could incite it a wee bit trouble by your uh, celebration. Uh, but you've got the right to say something. I said, sorry. Tell the match commander to F off, I said. <laughs> <laughs> Write that in your report. And then next year, the next year, I got them to the cup final, eh? And we can't yeah, speak what, up easy next that, year. Would, would that be in your proudest memory of your career, Jim, taking Dunfermline to a final? Uh, it was a difficult one, Simon, because I, I, no one got injured on the Wednesday. Right. Darren Young had scored in the semi-final against Livingston at Easter Road. But then the next week, or the, the week before the cup final, he broke his tee. So that was two, two really good players that was missing. Uh, Scott Wilson at the back end, so Barry Nicholson injured. So all the boys, I didn't have a really, my team... I played the boy Freddie Dark one. He was a great, great boy, but I got him out of that, that yeah. French foosball fan. Right, me. Up, uh... Aye, he's playing a cup final. <laughs> Yannick Zan Bernardi, my striker, never scored a goal in the, never scored a goal all season, and he's playing in the cup final. You can't. It's hard to beat a team like Celtic when you've got two of your best players not playing, isn't it? Well, never. But you just go to live in hope and you, you, you tell the boys they can do it and you, you go. And, but Simon, I think getting there was the biggest achievement to take, yeah. my, to take them firmly to a cup final. When you see, like, say, Jock's team, George Farn, uh, 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 who's the manager? Uh, uh, Ollie Cunningham. Steen Cunningham and Farn taking their teams to, to cup finals. And here's, here's this. There's a big goal for Lugiani. Proud man. Proud of it. You, you can't take these things away. Sam. You could criticise, yeah, oh, he's a big, oh, he did all the point, did all the, but it's an achievement, eh? It's an achievement. Yeah. Okay. So you see, after that, Jim, you obviously got them to a, a cup final. Why then did you become general manager? No, my wife took ill. Right. I, I, I stepped away. I stepped away when she took ill. They just had to look after her. Uh, there was no decision. No, 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 that was it. Yeah. No. How did you find that being a general manager uh, opposed to being the head coach and the manager? I think because of the circumstances, uh, Simon, the club looked after us at that time because I had time to go and look after uh, Mary. So my, mind, my, my mindset wasn't really on the football, eh? management, yeah. uh, it, was, it was more on looking after Harry. Yeah. Is that another reason why you've got such a soft spot for Dunfermline, Jim, for the way they treated you during that period as well? No, I always had, always had the soft spot. I treated them right, Simon, eh? Yeah. I treated Dunfermline right. I, I did my bit for them and they, they, they looked after me and uh, great memories. Of that. You know, but no, there was, to be fair at the time, they take as much time as, as you want off them. Brilliant. Uh, no, great. And uh, Stephen Kenny was a manager. Did you much? Obviously, the Republic of Ireland manager now. Did you have many dealings with him? I, I, I gave him the job. I got him the job. Why did Why did you pick him? Uh, he had just beat He had beat uh, Gretna five nothing in the cup. You know, the you, the, the, Europe, the Europe, cup, Europe, it? Yeah, yeah. Third hole, and his record was great. So uh, we were getting names we're, we're, we're to put names together, and no Hunts agent phoned me. Uh, Jim, I've got a boy that would be interested in coming across. 
I, I didn't know the man, but I, I knew his record. I went across to Dublin, spoke to him. He was a manager, manager of Derry. I went, went across and spoke to him across there. I invited him across, picked him up at the airport, took him to the board. They spoke to him and they thought he was the man for the job. Eh? Didn't work out for Stephen. Eh? Yeah. Didn't work out for him. Why was that? I, I, I don't know. You'd have to ask the players more than me, eh? But uh, uh, they just the players just didn't take to him. Eh? Right. He's coaching things. Eh? But hey, hey ho, Christ. Look at him now, eh? I don't know right now, isn't he? Yeah, uh, right. Right. A few bit, Jim, just on your OBE, 2007, services to sport. Amazing. Proud day. Wait, do you remember receiving the call to tell you you were going to get? I, I, I thought it was a wind-up. You get a letter, eh? In case you've no got one, Simon, what happens is you've... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like the NBA, you get a letter from uh, Downing Street recommending you to her Majesty the Queen. If you accept that you're getting nominated, you're right back and then... Uh, it's the Queen's birthday's honours list, eh? uh, and uh, Gordon, uh, they were, Gordon and Kate were staying in London at the time, so uh, we went down to stay with them, and we went out for a meal the night before, goes to the palace, and you go up the steps, they go into the, the main the, the main the, the area, eh? and they're all sitting, and <coughs> the, the orchestra's playing, and whatever, I'm in. and uh, you get your instructions time on there, and I was about the third last group of six to go through, and you're going through all the corridors, eh? and I'm at the end of the group, and uh, I'm just about going in, and I heard, do, 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 and I said to the boy in front of me, and I said, uh, the boy said to me, what's that? I said, that's the Queen. I says, she doesn't play the trumpet. I know the she. <laughs> we got that mixed up, but that's what I say to the boy when we heard the music. I say, she doesn't play the trumpet. I know the she. Well, <laughs> that was great, Simon. So do you meet her? Do you meet the queen? Oh hi. Where is she staying? What a record you got, yeah. <laughs> you working? Know no, she. Uh, <laughs> she. Uh, she. Um, she talked to uh, Meadowbank because Hollywood. We used to train behind the uh, Holyrood, right? Uh, uh, on the King whatever Parks, <coughs> and she talked to the film a very historic place, the film in the ancient capital of uh, Scotland. Uh, um, uh, must be, uh, you know that must be your um, your famous team, the film and the famous team, the film athletic. So she knew a wee bit. You only get about thirty seconds, Simon. Eh? Yeah. And then she pins it on you, and Chris, that's great. And then you you go and great. 30 seconds is usually all I need, Jim. Um, you've been given a number of accolades since as well. Uh, what one means the most to you? Oh, well, I got a, I was, a, a great one was through in Glasgow, uh, the Great Scott Award. And uh, there was, uh, you're sitting there in the audience and the photos come up, it was me, Chris Hoy, and uh, the other guy, Martin, some Mark, somebody that cycles all over Europe. Right. Uh, uh, the cyclist. So that was the three names, eh? And uh, it was Nicola Sturgeon. She uh, she was announcing the winner. And so, and the winner is uh, James Leishman. I felt great, eh? Felt great. Get on your bike, Chris. Hey, hey. <laughs> I <laughs> was Hoy with that? Was Hoy all right with you? Are you winning? Uh, he, he wasn't there. He must have came. He wasn't getting that. Right. Hey, hey, ho. Amazing. I didn't, I didn't vote for myself. It was him, eh? And just la lastly, Jim, how do you look back on your time in the game? Great. Made mistakes. Once. <laughs> Once. I learned that for Fergie. If a player makes a mistake, if he makes a mistake, it's a mistake. If he keeps making a mistake, get rid of him. That's negative. The kind of day if they keep making a mistake, they didn't make mistakes. Met some great people, some great players, and they so privileged, so privileged to, to have been part of this wonderful game of football. Never yeah. expected to, to, to be in it so long. My father, I commend my father, says, Look, James, make sure they kind of keep you at the team. If you're in, you're in charge, you stay in that team. And, and, and it's the same principle. If you work hard, they kind of pay you off. Brilliant. Jim, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much.
Hey, thank you for inviting me on. It's, uh, it's my pleasure. Love that. Thanks very much, Thank Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank See you. ya.